History of Dutz Death Diving The makers of this video doesn't recommend anybody doing this, jumping from heights like the 10 meter, can cause serious injuries or even death, do not try this. When jumping off a diving board, a belly flop is not the outcome most people are looking for, but for those competing in the crazy Norwegian sport of Dutzing. Hitting the water belly first is a risk that comes with the territory. Dutz, or death diving, is a Norwegian extreme sport, designed to thrill the divers and stun the spectators, that has daredevils jumping from a 10-meter high board with their arms and legs spread out in an axe formation, and curl into a ball immediately before hitting the water. The goal is to keep the pose for as long as possible and curl your body, right before hitting the water to prevent injuries. After the founding of the International Dutz Association in 2011, the sport's popularity grew rapidly. These days, the World Dutz Championship held as a big event, featuring close to 100 divers, thousands of spectators and many tuning in on the live coverage on Norwegian TV, ESPN, or on YouTube. So it's no surprise that the popularity of death jumping has begun spreading across Europe in recent years. The competitors compete in two different styles of death diving, classic and freestyle. In the classic event, competitors are to fly horizontally with their arms and legs extended, or moving them, right before they hit the water, they curl up, landing first with their feet and hands or knees and elbows to avoid serious injury. You are judged on the daring of the jump, the height, what you do during your jump, how long you dare to stay stretched out, before curling up your body and hitting the water. But also the way you land and how big of a splash you make. Freestyle is judged by the same factors, but here you of course can add much more spectacular moves. The sport was invented during the 1960s, at the Frognerbade pool complex in Oslo, by a bunch of kids trying to show off in front of their friends. The sport was formalized in the summer of 1972 by Erling Bruno Hoffen, then guitar player in Raga Rockers. Each year since its launch in 2012, the Bruno Award is given to the best classic death dive, or to honor an extraordinary performance or achievement. This is done to honor the founder, who died in a car crash only 24 years old. Death diving had its peak in the late 70s and 80s, when the so-called Frogner gang spent almost every summer day at Frognerbaden, showing off their skills to stun spectators. People from other parts of Oslo would also come, trying to outdo the locals, but they always went home disappointed. In the 90s the sport was on a descending curve, with fewer and fewer divers, until some snowboarders discovered the sport and revitalized it. They further developed it, adding spectacular somersaults and other acrobatic tricks, and in this way, freestyle death diving was born. Since 2008, the Death Diving World Championship has been held annually as an informal competition at Frognerbaden, but has now gotten so big that the completion has been moved from its place of birth. The biggest factor in the growth of death diving is undoubtedly the founding of the International Death Diving Federation in 2011, and the broadcasting of the sport on international mediums like YouTube and ESPN. Now there are competitors from many places in the world, trying to push the Norwegians down from the throne. In the last years the capacity has been maxed out with 3,000 paying spectators, with tickets being sold out. The Men's World Championship winners has unsurprisingly all been Norwegians, but with a growing international attention and arrangement of qualifying competitions in USA and around Europe, I don't think it will take long before we see the first non-Norwegian winner. The women's competition was introduced in 2018 and the first world champion was Swedish Miriam Hamburg, who won two years in a row. She was followed by Ingrid Eriksson Bru and Az Jord Nesh in 2021. The very first men's world champion was Christian Gjellman in 2008, followed by Frederick Amundsen, Vladimir Jevtik, Gord Samuelsson and Henning Martinsson in 2012. After that, the sport has been dominated by Philip Julius Dever, who won three years in a row, and Truls Torp, Emil Liebeck and Kim Andre Knudsen, who has won two times each, and Frederick Amundsen, who won in 2012, 
has been runner-up several times. But they shouldn't feel too secure, because the next generation of deaf jumpers are seriously on their way up. In 2019, a 13-year-old boy named Leo Landro stunned the deaf jump community and the spectators when he pulled off this jump with only one year of training. Believe it. What were you doing when you were 13? Certainly not this, Steve. Unfortunately, not all the judges was impressed with his jump in the final, and the points he got varied. Uh, oh, it it the spectators were not impressed with the points given, and booed the judges. Oh. Now the competition is organized so that in the final, two people compete against each other until there's one left who is the winner. But before that, the competitors got points for their performance and as far as I know, the only one to get a perfect score was Emil Liebeck in 2018, with this jump. But sometimes even the best death divers miss. The world record for women is 20 meters and was set by current women's world champion, as Jorg Nash. This is what her legs look like after setting the new record. The world record for the highest jump is 31 meters for men, set by Ken Storms in 2021. He was airborne for 4 seconds and hit the water at about 100 kilometers an hour. After the jump he pointed out how dangerous it is to jump from these heights, and that he was very relieved that everything went well, because there is so much that can go wrong, jumping from a height like that. He says that he doesn't recommend anybody doing this, it is very dangerous and can of course end in death. The same says the International Death Diving Federation, these people have many years of training, do not try this. This year, 2022, will be the 15th World Championship, and will be broadcasted live on YouTube and on different TV channels. You can find information about upcoming events at the International Death Diving Federation's webpage. There is a link in the description below. I hope you found this presentation interesting, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Please consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee, it would really help me to make higher quality videos. And I hope to see you in the next one.